And hello, I am Lord Tarmach Ben Yehuda Al Khazari. Um, there will be a quiz later on how to correctly pronounce my name. I fail. <sighs> you never fail. <laughs> um, I am protege to Master Philip, the the uh, pilgrim of Midrealm, who founded the Midrealm Photographers Guild. Um, I've been engaged in various forms of photography for a little better than 50 years. Um, my participation in the society is a little bit more than 25 years. I love photography. I love the society. Um, yeah. And the society has given me a lot of opportunity to evolve my, my photographic eye. And what I want to do with this class is not teach the class so much. I don't want to do the fiddly bits about exposure and uh, uh, ISO and you know, different lenses and all the technical stuff. This is going to be more a discussion about um, approach, about philosophy, and certainly it's going to be overlaid with a lot of things of what I do. Um, and that's the way this should be. This is a photography is, is a relative thing. You know, you have a sense of what you see. So I want to encourage people to um, to really examine what they're doing and what you can do with those pictures, those 275 pictures that you saw on Saturday at an event. Um, and of course, what I'm going to do is go to my share screen. Most of us, when we get started in the society, the first thing that we see is, look, cool fighters. We all get these shots you know, of, of the fighters out on a list. Maybe not as many as this. This is at Pemzik, of course. Um, but there will be fighters and they look cool and they sound cool. And you wanna get those pictures because you wanna show them to your friends and say, oh my gosh, this is such a cool thing. And that's great. There comes a point, however, at which you decide, I want to do something more if you are really looking with your photography at what you're doing. And you start looking more closely at what people are doing. You look at the intensity, the motion, uh, the emotions of the people in the background, like His Grace Dukes or Laurel and you know, studying these two fighters. Uh, this is a crowd attorney. Look at the footwork. This is what you can capture. And people, again, studying how they're fighting and how they're moving. Fencing is another wonderful thing. Fencing is almost like watching ballet. A um, lot of smooth movements and, and footwork. This is what I've started noticing after shooting for years with the SCA. And when I started with the society, I was still shooting film. It's only relatively new, maybe 12 years that I started shooting digital, which changed the whole game. The camera sees differently, the camera responds differently. And gosh knows when I went to my first event with um, a digital camera, which happened to be a Penzik, I came home with 630 pictures. It's like, I've never shot that much because I've always been concerned about the cost of the film and uh, the cost of the processing and what to do with all the pictures I don't use. Now I can just do things in a digital format and it's a lot smoother. After the fighting, there's details, there's little things that you tend to notice that communicate the uniqueness of the SCA, this, this special aspect of um, the decor, the interpersonal relationships, and the unique people. We're surrounded by interesting and unique people. Okay, maybe too unique. That's okay. This was for a, this was getting prepared for a, um, a Viking luau at Penzik. 
why do we take all these pictures? A lot of these are for a self record, the sense of we were here. Um, it's not just for yourself and your scrapbook, it can be for other people. Let me get a picture of your group, groups of friends. And of course, the ubiquitous selfie, those are important. There's the journalistic aspect, and I'll talk about this a bit more later, but there are a lot of pictures that will get reused uh, in various areas of the society. Um, whether it's the Penzik newsletter or Kingdom newsletter, wherever, these are important pictures. The social media office. In the last couple of years, the rise of having a social media office for our society uh, has dealt with a lot of the, uh, what does the SCA look like? And all these pictures are noticed by them. When you post pictures to Facebook, they're tracking these pictures and they're looking for um, ways to inform that outside world how we, how we look, what we do, how magnificent, how chivalrous, all these wonderful things that we're trying to express about ourselves. Um, the uh, organization front uh, office has used this picture for the last couple of years now. So it raises the question of what kinds of photos do people want to see? And it's certainly the fighters want to see uh, pictures of themselves connecting. We're all riding that little ego train. That's perfectly fine. Um, but there's more to it. Fighters like these types of pictures. They get to, you know, remember they were there and pounding the heck out of their friends and all that good stuff. It's all good stuff. But my friend Ursus, not long ago, posted a question for the general SCA populace saying, what more do you want to see? He was talking directly to the populace. And his answers were very valid. Candid photos, said one person. Those quiet moments, you know, between activities or when someone is telling a story or teaching a class holds during battles. Um, some of my favorite pictures are just people walking around at an event or just being themselves. Um, another person commented, oh yes, well, there's people being themselves. Um, garb pictures. You see someone with cool garb and you compliment them. I'll go back to that last picture. Um, that's a quiet moment. That's Her Majesty of the Middle holding the knight's chains during the, the champion's battle. And these are pictures when I try to say, I'm not here, don't look at me. And she was so focused on watching the fighters that I could do that. I could slip right in and, and take this calm picture of her holding all these chains. Archery pictures are so important because um, archers often don't get represented a lot. We're about our heavy fighters. We're a lot about our rapier fighters. Um, but archery has so much variety, especially when people come in with their handmade bows, um, their specialty equipment, or their shooting style is unique. Like, for instance, His Grace sitting on the ground shooting with a period style crossbow. Even just the archery list at an event, this is an all archery event. Equestrian is a topic. We don't get a lot of equestrian and when we do, it looks good. It looks like something period. Even with non-period buildings in the background, um, it's good representation for things we do. 
there was a, another person who said, quietly go check on the kitchen, see if it's okay to get pictures of people in the process. When we're making feasts, it's all hands on deck and there's a lot of work going on. And having this as a record is also good. Check with the head cook, um, discuss it in advance even with the head cook to make sure it's okay because there's a lot of bustle going on. This was at an event. This was a custom made rotisserie. It held 40 chickens at a time. That's something really kind of interesting to capture. Oh yes, this was a, a smoker. This guy made both items. This is a smoker that did a small side of cow at one time. Uh, the feast was lovely. Even just the details of, of a feast. Um, to capture the dishes and how they're presented because it's pageantry, it's color, um, and it tells part of our story. Garb, 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 garb. What can you say? There's so much beautiful garb and how we represent ourselves, how we present ourselves. You can just walk up to, to people and say, Oh gosh, I, I so much want a picture of that garb. Another person said, we want to see bardic pictures. And it's not just the static shot of someone reciting. Um, it's performers, it's groups of people that get together. Here's a group of people that just sort of clustered together at uh, a space at, uh, at the Penzik War. It's community. Bardic is a community. Or yes, you can get you know, a, a certain person, but performance is sometimes performance with a capital P. I'll go back a moment. Other things that people were talking about, um, when someone goes on vigil, ask if you can get a picture of them in their private vigil space. That's a, a very um, special territory. Um, if you offer to take pictures of them, meeting people in their um, uh, vigil space, um, that's an important memory for them later on um thrown weapons um gatekeepers uh the details of of an event um all those pictures are of value they really are um okay so i'll talk only for a moment about equipment um only so much as this is a digital SLR. I use that. But plenty of pictures, are decent pictures are taken with a point and shoot camera or even cell phones. Uh, this is a point and shoot picture my wife took uh, with that Canon camera I just showed you. Um, it was uh, put on the back of our kingdom newsletter because she caught a moment and it's a great memory. It's a fun picture. Um, the recently crowned uh, Prince Sato was getting the eye from his queen. We don't even remember exactly what it was. Doesn't matter. It's a fun picture. Uh, my friend Cadfin was marshalling this archery event, pulls out his cell phone and shoots a picture. Caught an arrow in the air, caught, you know, someone uh, getting ready to draw. Um, it's a great dynamic. I told them, send it to the Kingdom newsletter. They used it. What I always tell people that no matter what they're using, get to know what your camera can do. Shoot a lot of pictures because the camera doesn't see exactly like your eye. Most people know that. Um, it's an idiot. Understand what it does in various lighting situations, 
Um, you can take an online class and look at the controls. This is the back of my wife's point and shoot camera. There is a control for making grid lines. It's a nine by nine grid, or pardon me, a nine uh, square grid that allows you to get the pitch of the camera right as far as where it is in relation to the horizon line. It allows you to get a sense of where your subject is. Just a little visual cue. Um, yeah, that's what that looks like. So you can see horizon lines a little off. You can reset that. It's a useful tool. As I mentioned, go online, look up how to take pictures with your phone if you're going to use your phone. Because the phone nowadays, uh, the capabilities, the resolutions and things are really high. I mean, people are using cell phones for video uh, work. So there's no reason why a cell phone isn't a good enough uh, tool to take pictures with, especially for the society. So again, what are we photographing? Um, we're photographing the important memories, these family scenes, these event scenes that are reporting and recording into our SCA history. Even the objects at an ANS competition. Um, and you include in you know, the fact that there's documentation and it tells its little story. Sometimes there's just a very big picture to happen. And this was at uh, the mid realm 50 year. This was at that moment, all the attending royals past and present in one picture. That was an honor. Or at an event, uh, even your local uh, group event, uh, we had a, uh, uh, a champions battle and these were people who had fought and their their consorts sca is a sporting event it's true and you can shoot the sca like a sports photographer you keep looking for those moments where things are happening this is certainly everything is happening at that moment Again, this is one of those moments which I, I'm very proud of this picture, not because I caught the motion, it's all the expressions on the people in the background, as well as the fact that no one's holding a cell phone up. So it looks like something, period. That's uh, a, a unique moment in, in shooting a picture at the, in, in the SCA. And these moments are not completely rare. They're, they're out there and you can get these moments. Oh, we're back to that. Well, yes, it's a family scene. I want to talk about the do's and don'ts of shooting at events for a moment. Um, the first rule is basically the same as when you talk to a peer about becoming their apprentice, their protege. Um, Apparently, for many peers, the first rule is don't be a jerk. Um, don't shove your way in with your camera to get that moment. Um, you can step back and let the important people in. Um, I've even stood behind banners uh, up at the dais so that I'm not obvious and shoot from around the banner. Um, that's part of keeping a low profile. So again, don't be in everyone's face. Uh, I actually witnessed somebody at an event uh, 
when two royals were opening the event with an important ceremony and the photographer walked right in front between the uh the populace and the 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 royals got his picture and walked away it's like wow did you really do that when it comes to shooting pictures especially in court ask the royals ahead of time uh especially at the beginning of an event say to them i want to shoot pictures what is your preference can i be can i be up at the uh, the dais during your court um are there moments you want particularly captured um is there something you don't want me to do and this also applies to taking pictures of children because most of us will be posting our pictures on social media ask the parents that's without question you have to do that the kids are cute but you got to ask the parents their permission uh, if you post stuff and the fourth rule about taking pictures at events that i really emphasize don't take pictures of people eating you inevitably get a picture that looks like someone is removing food from their face and it just doesn't go well I have one that you might have forgot. Please. If somebody to... if somebody asks you to remove a picture and remove it immediately. Yes. Oh gosh, yes. Thank you, Dagra. <laughs> I had I had forgotten about that one. Um, yeah, if if that picture is up on social media and so on contacts you and says, Oh gosh, I look terrible. Don't argue. Don't edit it, don't argue about it, just remove it. <laughs> Elements of composition. It's all about framing. Um, if you are focusing on something in particular, yeah, that's that's the core element of your picture. Go in there, get that shot. Um, go back. You can use uh, your light and shadow to really push the picture. Um, slight tilt of an angle to create a tension. Um, and again, if you mentally picture that set of grid lines that I was talking about, you'll notice that that upper line, which probably crosses right here, goes right through um, my friend Neem's uh, left eye and it's poised it's balanced it's right on center it's on that line and it's a very warm and friendly picture so you can actually you know frame it it doesn't have his entire body or his entire hair you get neem looking at you and that's a strong picture um as a photographer you look around yourself and you say you say those things inspire me um i was given a copy of this book years ago i really recommend it because sca photography is a lot like shooting pictures for rolling stone um this book was such an education in how to look at the world around me um through a camera because there's very personal portraits of people there's those explosive moments in a concert um there are created pictures <coughs> things that are posed um all the dynamics of the world of rock and roll are pretty much part of sca and this book is still available you can find it on amazon you can find it on ebay uh, not terribly expensive. If you're paying 20 bucks, that's a lot. Great book. Um, personally, I'm also very inspired by old movies. Um, I like 
a lot of John Ford Westerns, uh, his imagery. Uh, he once commented in an interview, um, you don't always put your horizon line dead center. You move it up or down um, and move your subject. Where is your subject? Here's John Wayne. He's not dead center walking away from the camera. He's moving from left to slightly right. Stanley Kubrick has such an immense and incredible eye for placement of, of his dynamics. Jack Nicholson's eyes dead center and all this detail of the room swirling in the background as he's going quite mad. And yet in 2001, if you look at the entire frame, his eyes are dead center in the frame. Kubrick was frequently uh, recording his, uh, his primary subject as an isolated figure in a larger world. So if you look at the last picture again, Nicholson's expression catches your attention, but it's not a close-up of him. He's part of this larger world. And Orson Welles, who frequently isolates people in a room. It's like they're trapped within the corners of the room. This is another uh, uh, film, Touch of Evil. Again, the room. And there's this sense of, um, of being hemmed in. These are all parts of the storytelling. When I was in college in my photography class, the, my um, professor always said, never put the subject directly in the middle of the picture. Always yeah. Off. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great truth and something that uh, I'm still working on. <clears throat> and so what I've put together very briefly is about two dozen pictures. This is sort of the, the seventh inning stretch of my presentation. Um, I wanted to give you two dozen pictures uh, of something I've been developing in style over the last couple of years, two, three years. Uh, I like to call them drive-by shootings. Um, I will see someone I can wave my camera at them and I'll go, I want you to look at me or I'll go directly to them and say, look over to that side. And I've been enjoying taking these pictures of interesting people who are part of our society and creating this sense of portraiture. I've always been extremely fond of the portrait photo. Those, that last picture and this picture, again, <clears throat> I'll go up to somebody and say, I'm not here. Don't look at me. And they're so into their own presence and their persona that they know exactly where they are as far as stance and doing what they're doing. This last, this is the last picture. This was not posed. She was in conversation with somebody else. I was sitting across from her. I picked up my camera and I saw this and shot it. You can't resist. It was just perfect timing. 
gosh, I get lucky sometimes. <coughs> so after you shoot all these, uh, oh, and after I shoot all those pictures, <coughs> I will edit my pictures. Not everyone cares to edit. It's a lot of fussy work. Um, and there's software involved and it takes time away from other activities. I like editing. Um, but even without the software, one of the first things you need to do is cull your pictures. Um, when I spoke with Master Philip that I wanted to teach this, to, that I wanted to offer this class, the first thing he says is please tell people, don't upload a couple hundred pictures and expect people to look at every one of them. This sequence, however, is the only exception I've made to that. Um, this was at a, a Harvest Days event in the mid realm. And um, after somebody was elevated to Pelican, um, somebody suggested, hey, you know, we've got all these Pelicans here. Let's get a group picture. And I galloped up and I said, oh, I'll be happy to. And Master Phillips said, no, no, his at that time, protege, uh, now Her Excellency Marissa of Red uh, of uh, uh, Barony of the Flame, uh, was going to take the picture. So Marissa steps up, and just as she's focusing, Philip says, "Your Majesties, I beg a boon." He asked for Marissa's elevation, and I was standing next to Marissa, and I just kept shooting. And finally, someone came over and she could finally put down her camera and they could laugh about it. Uh, one of those wonderful gotcha moments in the society. Call your pictures, get out the important one, get out the ones that tell the story without having to beat people senseless that there's <coughs> this story. Um, you can take a picture and move it with your software or even in your cell phone, um, move the borders to get the point of attention. Now, this picture is that I don't shoot uh, with my camera in uh, what they call JPEG mode. I shoot in raw, which means that while I get a huge amount of data with every frame, uh, it bypasses the camera's built-in, I'll compensate for uh, light exposure as far as the white balance, and things like that. I have to do that all later when I edit, but that's part of my process. I'm good. This is direct from the camera, a picture of kids um, on this list. Permission was asked to use this picture. This is what it looks like after I have <coughs> corrected the white balance and a bit of the exposure of this picture. And then I go in and reframe it. Now there's more tension. Um, you feel a stronger sense of connection with, there are these kids you know, poking each other with sticks while this gentleman looks on. This tells more of the story um, with a greater sense of, that's a story. Another uh, discussion of cropping. Uh, not all my pictures are exact eight by 10 classic framing, 11 by 14 framing. Um, sometimes you just wanna crop out everything, but um, the central activity, the thing that's happening right there. That's okay, especially you know, when you post to Facebook, tell this story. Um, the people walking by in the background or chatting with each other in the background, they're not part of this is the story in this frame. I've even gone back to older pictures like this one of um, His Excellency Sato first getting his knighting. <clears throat> and I reframed it. 
now it's a tighter picture and it tells the story a little bit better. Also fiddled with the exposure a bit, it's true. But I'm gonna go back for a moment. Remember I said, don't be a jerk? That day, I learned my first lesson in being a jerk. Um, when it came time for Sir, uh, His Excellency Sato's elevation, as usual in the mid-realm, I suppose elsewhere, they call together the uh, attending uh, members of the chivalry uh, to bear witness. Uh, I was sitting in the front row and all the, uh, the chivalry gathers around and in front of me and to the left of me and a bit to the right of me. And I decided to drop to my knees and kind of nestle in with them. Um, Master Philip, who was there, and I was not his proje at the time, uh, was approached by several people later saying, how dare that guy, me, uh, take a position with the chivalry? Um, you got to know your place during ceremonies, because if you're not really part of the ceremony, you need to rethink what you're doing. Um, try and find another way to get that picture. As it is, I've gotten to a point where the chivalry kind of tends to ignore me now, and that's fine. I'm a happy fly on the wall. But that's over years of, of continually taking pictures. Cropping is fun. And again, going back and cropping a picture gives you surprises because here's a picture of my local unit, the Cleflins <coughs> at Penzik, uh, wading into battle with, another, with, with an opponent force. And out of curiosity, I wanted to examine this section and I blew it up. I cropped the picture as it were. And I discovered Excellency was smiling. How many times have you been to a combat, to a heavy fighting situation, and you see somebody smiling as they're approaching their opponent to club them? You get a secondary picture when you crop. And the other thing, oh, yes. In this um, Photoshop Lightroom, I use Lightroom, I use itself. Light Lightroom been, is my favorite too. Yeah, Lightroom has a lot of things going on. Uh, another friend has suggested I look at something called ON1, ON1. Um, there's a lot of free, um, there's a lot of tools out there that uh, are available to do this kind of cropping, to manipulate the light. Um, when you crop in light, it gives you that grid and put a line right through there and put a line right through his hand, which is <clears throat> um, a point that you wanna em have emphasized. Um, I'm not 100% married to these lines, but I find that uh, these grid lines make my pictures pop a bit better. If you try it, you might like it too. The other thing that software allows me to do is manipulate the light values in the picture, not just the overall light values. Again, this is um, the raw straight from my camera image of um, this man being knighted. But it's not quality of the light, which is a bit yellow because that was the type of lamps. But also, His Majesty is being backlit. The lights for this ceremony were behind him and above him. And his face is heavily in shadow. And it's not just a question of the fact that um, His Excellency or his majesty, I should say at the time, um, has a darker skin tone. Uh, this also happened 
uh, at uh, Penzik War in uh, uh, the older building where we used to have our courts. And again, very bright source lights that were ceiling, uh, shadowing his majesty's face when he's talking to someone who is slightly below him. What can I do? So after adjusting the picture and cropping it a bit tighter, the software I use, uh, in this case, it was Lightroom, allows me to uh, use a brush basically and identify all the shadow area on his majesty and separately lighten it from the rest of the frame. Now you see his expression without it looking utterly unnatural. And you have this great tension, grid line there, grid line right there. And there's your image. And one other thing that I love about playing with the software, I hate the background distractions. Not all of them, you can't get all of them. Certainly I'm not going to try and take out all of this, but you can edit out certain things. And one of the things I hate are exit signs. So I could take out the exit sign digitally. Um, sometimes there's a sign on the door or a door knock, just something that kind of causes the eye to stray away. Also with the editing software, there are tools for vignetting, which gives you a soft, either darker or lighter ring around your subject, or very simply go take the brush, sweep out the area and just darken it so that your subject just pops right off of uh, the screen. So you have all these pictures, you have your 230 or your 500 from a weekend. What can you do with them? The SCA has a publication called Tournaments Illuminated. Your kingdom probably has a newsletter. Your local group has a newsletter. And you have a social media site. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and you can post to the society or you can post to your local group. Whatever it is, if the picture is going to be used in a publication, the society has a grant of use form. You can find that on the kingdom page. Ouch for the other kingdoms. But these are also available on the society page. Uh, if you look up your forms and documents. There is copyright uh, page for, that is uh, separate. There is also a model release form, uh, which is necessary if you're going to photograph somebody. And by the way, that person's armor wearing it is part of their identity and you'll need a model release form. Uh, I've had to do that with uh, uh, one cover of uh, Tournaments Illuminated. Oh, another publication is, um, at least at Penzik, there is a, new, uh, a daily newspaper, uh, which I've contributed to and Philip has, and many others have. Uh, if you turn in pictures, uh, it might get used the next day. So that's another source. Need to have access to forms, uh, especially for the larger publications. Um, look at your pictures carefully and, and, you know, do your editing, crop it, get a really good image, turn it in. Uh, we want to see your pictures. We wa everybody wants to see your pictures because it's part of our, our society memory. Also, um, get an external hard drive. Try and 
learn to file your pictures carefully, uh, whether it's by event or however you are, are most comfortable with filing. Um, someone just asked for dinner, excuse me. Um, separate storage. Master Philip even uses two hard drives. He keeps one at a, at a trusted friend's home and updates it once a year. Um, actually, both of his hard drives once a year uh, with all the pictures he's shot. Um, many people will use things like Shutterfly or Flickr uh, to post their edited pictures. Perfectly valid. I like to use Facebook simply because people like to respond, comment, call attention to others that they're in a picture. Um, it's a question of choice. I'm just mentioning my own personal choice. But really, let's get your pictures out there. Let's see your pictures. And um, let's make these pictures really good because this is an age of social media and you are part and parcel. Once you pick up your camera, you are part and parcel of social media. So I know I've said, I, I, I skipped an hour and a half because I had no idea as this kind of a novice teacher. Um, I have run out of much of what I'm going to tell you. If you have any questions, please, I'd like to hear them uh, or discussions of what you do. I need to start bringing my camera more. <laughs> I need to see you more, Dagger. Yeah, I usually, I've been, like I used to take photos when I first joined the CA a lot. Like my camera came with me everywhere, but I, af after the last two or three years, I'm like, uh. Well, you've been busy with, uh, uh, other things going on, but I remember your pictures. You had some great stuff. I love doing it. It's just, I got to, like, now that everything's set, I moved and uh, I can yeah. start bringing my camera with me more. Yeah, yeah. So if there's any questions, I, I, I rendered an image of my, uh, the business card I carry to events. Um, it has my email address, so I want to include that into this video recording. Um, contact me uh, off of this if you'd like, and uh, let's compare notes. And again, let's see your pictures uh, everywhere. Because while photography obviously is in no way, shape or form uh, part of the SCA history, documentation is and you're part of the documentation now i thank you for your time and degren i think we're done okay thanks for your help you too